Think about this. In the beginning of March, a month ago, you guys didn't know anything about the coronavirus. You guys were making jokes like, oh, coronavirus, coronavirus, I drink Modelo. I'm all good. Oh, this is my daily coronavirus update. Here's my medical degree behind me, Texas A&M University. And then I'm a surgeon, so here's my surgical diploma. If I get it up right there for you. All right, Chris, the St. Joseph's Hospital and general surgery right there, 2005. I just show you that because I want you to know that you're getting your information from a really credible source. Um, I have friends and colleagues who are um, international and I've been tracking this pandemic for several weeks now and uh, so far, unfortunately, uh, I've been correct in most of my predictions with the one exception. Uh, my numbers have been a little low. We're actually way behind. Uh, we're way worse than where I thought we would be. Uh, that's not good. Now, we are making a little bit of um, improvement, but, the, but it, I promise you it's gonna get worse before it get better. So, um, for those of you guys who think I'm fear-mongering, I don't know, I can't, I can't help you. I still love you. I still hope you don't get the coronavirus. I still hope that you won't have a sick one uh, that's gonna be fighting this or dealing with this. I still love you. You're, you're just wrong. Please hit share. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, so I'm not doing this to frighten you. I'm just, just do the math with me real quick, okay? Today is March 31st. Um, the New York Times just put out, we're at 184,000 cases in the United States alone, 184,000. Uh, 840,000 cases worldwide, 840,000 cases worldwide with 40,000 deaths. So uh, there's about a four to four and a half percent death rate worldwide with coronavirus. Um, just for those of you who are new to this, uh, the influenza, the seasonal flu has a death rate of 0.1%, 0.1%. So even if you don't believe in the statistics, you don't believe that the data is accurate, you don't believe that people are getting tested enough or whatever it is you want to believe, whatever bullshit story you want to say, even a death rate of 1% is 10 times more than the regular flu, 10 times. So a uh, 1% death rate of a lot of people is a big ass number. That's the first thing you gotta realize, okay? So in the United States, we're patting ourselves on the back because our death rate was way lower. It was 1.3% for the last couple of weeks. Well, now today we are up to about 1.9% death rate. And New York City, when this all started a couple of weeks ago, New York State, I mean, New York State, was bragging about this 0.3% death rate. And they were like, I don't understand. What's the big deal? The death rate's only 0.3% here. You know, they had 500 cases at the time. This, was, this would have been March 13th, um, about two weeks ago. And, um, but Washington State, which was where it started for the United States, had a death rate of 6%. And I said, watch, that death rate in New York's gonna go up. The New Yorker's foolish for walking around acting like, you know, nothing's, this isn't a big deal. Today, the death rate, can you believe New York State alone has 75,000 corona cases? 75,000 corona cases in, the, uh, in one state. If it were a country, it would be fifth in the world in number of cases. It's about to surpass China, think about that. Where all this started, New York State is about to surpass China. That's crazy, right? And unfortunately, these, this is one of the predictions I don't like, but the death rate in New York State is now 2%. It has gone up to 2% from 0.3%, and it's gonna continue to rise. I did a video yesterday explaining why the death rate is gonna be higher before it gets lower, and why it's, it's, it's gonna get much higher than you think. And it's mostly because there's a lag time for people being on ventilators and being, people being sick. So let's get on with my predictions for um, Easter. Easter's not gonna be pretty, guys. I love y'all. Uh, God bless America. So let's just do the math with me real quick. Just stay with me real quick, okay? So um, we're at 184,000-ish cases uh, this evening. Probably by the time we wake up in the morning or about mid-afternoon mid on April 1st, we'll be around 200,000 cases, okay? So 200,000 cases, <clears throat> and this is doubling like uh, every uh, four, four or so days, right? Or so. So if we have 200,000 cases tomorrow on April 1, then April 4th, right? The first, second, third, fourth, April 4th, it's gonna double. So we're gonna go for 200,000. April 4th will be 
400,000, right? April 8th will be 800,000. April 12th, Easter, will be 1.6 million. I'll do that one more time for you. So tomorrow will probably be above 200,000 cases in the United States. I'm only talking about the United States alone. 200,000 cases tomorrow, April 1st. So that means by April 4th, it'll be, this is the doubling time. It should be 400,000 by April 4th. April 8th will be 800,000. April 12th, Easter, 1.6 million cases. That's my dire prediction. Now, it looks like hopefully this curve is slowing down a little bit. So I will, caught, I will be optimist. I will be very happy if by Easter I'm wrong and we only have a million cases instead of 1.6 million cases. Nothing to brag about, y'all. Let's do a 2.6, I'm sorry, let's do a 2% death rate, right? Of a million cases, that's 20,000 deaths by Easter Sunday. 20,000 deaths. So the range I'm predicting is 1 million to 1.5 million cases for Easter by Easter. That equals to 20,000 to 30,000 deaths. And um, we will be lucky if it's only a million. If we continue the projections, we are closer to the 1.5 million range, 30,000 deaths. And people are sitting there and going, but Dr. Vong, that's still small compared to obesity. It's still small compared to heart attacks. It's still small compared to car wrecks. It's still small compared to the regular flu. Well, first of all, fucker, listen to me. These, these idiots who are posting these numbers, they are taking an entire season of the flu and says, you know, every season... A bad flu season is 20, 30,000 people die in a, bad, in a bad flu season. We're gonna, we already have, four, and worldwide, and we already have 40,000 worldwide di dying. Um, it's just idiotic, that's number one. Number two, the coronavirus is a plus one, it's an add-on, all right? It's an add-on. That means this is the dude who shows up uninvited and crashes your party. You know, you had cooked enough meals for 20 people, and this dude shows up with two or three other fuckers and ruins your dinner party. So the coronavirus is an add-on. You're still gonna have car wrecks. You're still gonna have heart attacks. You're still having strokes. You're still having anxiety attacks. You're still having suicide attempts. You're still having stabbings and gunshots, right? You still have, you still have allergies, and you still have the regular flu. So the coronavirus is an add-on. Like in the history, there's never been this add-on that in three months, I mean, think about this. In the beginning of March, a month ago, you guys didn't know anything about coronavirus. You guys were making jokes like, oh, coronavirus, coronavirus, I drink Modelo, I'm all good. Come on, you know it. And now look, a month later, most of us are shut down. The states shut down. California is on lockdown. New York State is miserable. I mean, you do not want to go to New York State. You're going to be in major trouble. Um, you're, you're, they're going to block travel in and out. International borders have been you know, blocked. I, I think we've stopped travel to Canada and Mexico to try to keep the spread from going in there. But Canada's going to get it. Um, now, it used to be uh, March 12th. You know, Washington State was the number one, 600 cases in the United States. New York State was behind it, 500 cases, right? Now, Washington State is like seventh. Like, New York. It was New York and California for a long time. And then New Jersey. And you can see the spreading, the distribution, because it's all the Northeast, right? New York, New York State, New York City is a major travel hub. So you had all these planes coming in and out, all these visitors, visitors going to go see Broadway and the plays and... Statue of Liberty and all this stuff, and they just took it all out. And you have a lot, millions of people living in northern New Jersey, and they're commuting to work back and forth, and now New Jersey is the second most affected state. New York, New Jersey, California, because California, you got, you know, it went from Washington State down to San Francisco, and LA, because it's another hub. Atlanta's popping, 
Now look at this. What happened with New Orleans? I mean, nobody's talking about New Orleans. I started talking about New Orleans last week. And I was like, dude, New Orleans is in trouble. New Orleans is in trouble. The numbers were really increasing. And I knew it was in trouble because I have have friends there in, in the hospital systems. And they're like, dude, we are pushed to the max. Our coronavirus be beds are full to capacity. Um, we are working day and night. They're, we're sending people home with pneumonia. This was New Orleans like a week and a half ago and no one was talking about it. And now we know New Orleans is a hot spot. Now people are sitting there saying, man, it's because they didn't cancel Mardi Gras. Probably had a huge thing to do with it. Now listen, I love Mardi Gras. I love the city of New Orleans, but it is ripe. By that I mean you have, um, you had Mardi Gras. You have a lot, and I, I trained there in med school. I did a month rotation there. You have a lot of comorbidities. You have a lot of obesity in New Orleans. You do, and, and I've done videos where obesity is a comorbidity. It's a major risk factor. BMI over 40 is a major risk factor for coronavirus. Um, high blood pressure, diabetes, really badly controlled diabetics, you know, homelessness. Um, it all kind of comes together you know, in New Orleans and that surrounding area. And God bless them, you know, independent, kind, kind-hearted people. Um, but they were slow to respond, and we're seeing it. And in fact, I'm in Houston, and we are quarantining people who've come in from New Orleans, if, from Louisiana. You have to be quarantined if you traveled there or from there, um, if you come to Texas. So we're doing our best, right? Now, my predictions for Easter, I'll say it one more time. If you do the doubling rate, right? Tomorrow we're gonna wake up April 1st, 200,000 cases, four days. This is the doubling time of this virus. Four days, we'll have April 4th, 400,000 cases. Four more days, April 8th, we'll have 800,000 cases. Four more days, April 12th, that's Easter, 1.6 million cases. I'm gonna to try to be conservative and say one to one and a half million cases by Easter. That leak equals 20,000 to 30,000 deaths. And, and that's the United States alone. That's the United States alone. And that's because that's even with all of the canceled shows, canceled concerts, canceled uh, sporting events, canceled Major League Baseball, basketball, all that stuff, UFC, canceled Broadway. Broadway's closed. Guys, Las Vegas is closed. They've turning down the turning off the lights on the Las Vegas Strip. So many people are becoming unemployed. Think about this. This is going to wreck us, um, like devastate us economically. Now listen, why is this important? We've done all of that, and we're still going to have a million to a million and a half cases in Easter by Easter. In twelve fucking days, we're going to have a million cases in the United States alone. Okay, even with all of the stuff that we've already done. Imagine, now you have loved ones, young kids, uncles, aunts, who thinks this is media hype, who thinks this is a hoax, who don't understand why they're having to stay home. They think this is way overblown. They think this is fucking political. They think this is a Trump thing to get Trump out of office. This is so asinine. Even with shutting everything off, we're going to have a million to a million and a half cases by Easter in the United States alone. Imagine, fucker, what if we hadn't done it? For all of you smart asses out there who are sitting there going, this is nothing compared to regular flu. This is nothing compared to heart attacks. This is nothing. What if we hadn't taken action? Look at Italy. I'll tell you what happened to Italy. Italy has 100,000 cases, 11,000 deaths. Who knows how to do that math? That's an 11% death rate. 11% death rate. What if we had an 11% death rate? What if we had an 11% death rate? A million cases by Easter, that's 110,000 deaths. But because we took action, not quickly enough, and maybe not as extreme enough, there are still pockets of areas like Wyoming, Montana, who are still like, I don't understand what the big deal is. I get it. There's still places like Nebraska, South Carolina, who still can't get their shit. They don't seem to, South Carolina doesn't seem to understand that Pennsylvania, New Jersey is just right up the coast. And they're acting like it's no big deal. Like people in Alabama, Mississippi, they don't seem to realize that Louisiana is just right a state right over. I mean, it is just burp, jump right over. And they're not, they're 
You're not taking it seriously enough. So what if we hadn't done this? And as cavalier as Americans are, as arrogant, I love you. We're arrogant sons of bitches. We think we know best. But even what if we hadn't done these restrictions? How bad would it be? Just do the math. It would be unbelievable. Can you imagine one basketball game? This is how it started, right? Two uh, Utah Jazz basketball players tested positive for coronavirus. And then they thought, oh my God, what if we infected everybody in the arena? 10,000, 15,000 people at a sporting event, baseball season, all these concerts. Dude, like, you know, I went to a Pink concert a couple years ago, Taylor Swift concert a year ago. I mean, you're talking 80,000 people in an arena. And what if these concerts, you know, some big stars are touring. Pink is touring. Justin Bieber's touring. You know, we were going to get tickets to Justin Bieber. <laughs> My girlfriend's only 28. What do you want from me? <laughs> so what if we hadn't taken this seriously? For all of the naysayers, for all of the people who are hating on me, for all of the people who think I'm a fear monger, what if we hadn't taken action, right? The truth of the matter is this. We have trailers, 18-wheel trailers in New York City that's acting like morgues. They're not trailers delivering supplies. Listen to me, guys. They're makeshift morgues where they're putting the dead bodies. Believe it or not, I don't have to read CNN. I, I get it from my buddies who are, oper who are surgeons in New York State, in New York City, and they're telling me, dude, we are overwhelmed. We've got ob gins running vents. You've canceled all the left of cases because you need the anesthesiologists who run vents. You're talking about taking all of the operating room anesthesia machines and turning them into ventilators. You're talking about calling for, you know, just these outpatient elective surgery centers and asking them for their ventilators. This is where we are. It's just the truth of the matter. New Orleans is already overwhelmed. Michigan is in trouble, y'all. Michigan. Out of nowhere. Give me an amen. Out of nowhere. If you're from Michigan, Michigan just <laughs> blew to the top. Surpassed Chicago, you know, California, just boom. Man, Michigan's incredible. Um, Florida. Oh my God. Florida, for the longest time in Texas, we were controlling everything. We had about, a, you know, we had 500 cases and then we both passed 1,000 cases. Today, uh, Texas, I'm in Houston, Texas, has 3,000 cases today. 3,000 cases, I don't know, 30 deaths, 35 deaths, something like that. Florida, we were neck to neck for the longest time. Now Florida has 6,000 cases, twice. Spring break was last week. Spring break was, you know, 10 days ago. Guess what happened? Spring break was when I was yelling at people, stay your asses home, right? And now Florida has jumped way past Texas, doubled Texas. Think about that. These little decisions that we make. If you have a young kid, a millennial, somebody in the 20s, an uncle who just does not believe that this is real, please tag them on this video. Please share this video for them. My prediction for Easter is grim. If we keep the doubling rate at every four days, tomorrow, you do the math, tomorrow we're going to have 200,000 cases on April 1st. By April 12th, Easter, we'll have 1.6 million cases if it keeps doubling. So I'm going to be conservative and I'm going to predict between one to one and a half million cases by Easter with a 2% death rate that's 20,000 to 30,000 deaths. And we know the death rate's going up based on the video I told you yesterday, how these patients that have been on the ventilators are now starting to die. That's what's happening, guys. These patients who've been on the ventilators for the last two weeks, they're starting to die. To the point that we are hospitals, hospital systems, and their medical staffs are considering not resuscitating someone who codes if they're in a coronavirus positive and they're on a ventilator and they code. We're not going to pump your chest, give all the drugs, try to resuscitate you. That's what they're considering in the hospital systems. 
I'm telling you right now because you're going to have to face this news when your grandmother gets sick, when your mom gets sick, because you dickhead went to spring break. Because you don't wash your hands. Because you don't believe in social distancing. And you're not going to get to see your mom or your grandma because no one's going to be allowed in the hospital. There will be no visitation because we can't let it spread. There won't be rooms. There's no fucking waiting rooms. Y'all get this, right? There are no more waiting rooms in hospitals. There are no lobbies. They're, they are putting up makeshift hospital rooms in the lobbies of these major medical centers. You understand this, right? You hear me? There is no, like, I need to go see mom before she dies. No, you will not be allowed in. And now your hospitals and your doctors are considering not coding people who die on a ventilator, whose hearts stop beating. We are considering just letting them pass. That's the reality we're facing. Italy's already done it. Italy has already said they're not putting intubation in anyone who's over 80 and has coronavirus. You get it? I told you, I told you two weeks ago you were going to start seeing white pitch, like makeshift tents. Haven't you started seeing white tents pop up? And that's where all the coronavirus suspected people are going through. You've seen the makeshift tents, right? And now what? You're, gonna, you're starting to see them turn uh, convention centers into hospitals. You're starting them to see, uh, see them turn like college campuses into hospitals. These extra buildings, these extra rooms, right? And we need it. You're still going to die. There's still going to be people that are going to die. This is going to get worse before it gets better. I'm telling you, I'm not a fear monger. I'm just giving you the straightforward facts. I'm not sugarcoating it. I don't need you to keep a positive attitude. I know stressing you out making it lowers your immunity. I don't need any dickheads telling me that. Man, listen, normally I teach my patients how to meditate, gratitude journal, positivity. And I'm telling you, we're positively not taking this coronavirus serious enough. I am positive. The message is not out enough. I'm positive it's going to get worse before it gets better. And once it peaks, I'm positive I'm going to tell you, don't let your guard down. Keep doing it. We're not past it. Don't believe the media. Don't believe the media that it's past. It's not. It's still going to be lingering. We are not going to hit the peak till mid-May. Early to mid-May. Easter is going to be our inflection point. By that I mean Easter is when we're going to really accelerate. I promise you. Easter is going to be the doomsday. It's going to be either make it or break it for Easter. Okay? Our trajectory, how fast we go up. Right? So for everybody who sit there and go and see, the numbers are not as bad as they first predicted. Dude, When it, it's like a hurricane. You guys know hurricane maps, right? When there's a hurricane out there in the Atlantic, they have all of these model projections who, who's going everywhere spreading out like this, like spreading out. You've seen these hurricane projections, right? And then as the hurricane comes closer and closer to Florida or the Gulf, now then the projections start coming together. They start getting more and more alike. That's all this is. When this first started, they were like, dude, worst case scenario, we're going to have 2 million Americans, just Americans, 2 million Americans dead. We got to start like taking care of this. So they shut down the government. Now they're talking, oh, 200,000. And people, dickheads are walking around going, see, it's only 200,000 people. We were way over, we were fear mongering this whole time. What? 200,000, like that's okay? What's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with people? The, the projection models have just gotten better. But it's still fucking bad. It's still a hurricane. It's still coming to ravage you. You gotta get serious. You still gotta board up the windows. You gotta board up your windows and doors. And hopefully the hurricane turns and hits your neighbor. <laughs> it's the next state, not your state. But I'm telling you, the, this is looking bad. All of the states are going to be affected in the United States. We can only hope to contain it. We can only hope to mitigate it. Remember the timeline. Easter is going to be a major inflection point for us. Beginning of May, uh, middle to middle of May is going to be the apex, the peak. We'll start seeing cases go down, but it's still going to be a huge number of cases every single day, all through the end of May. The people on the ventilators are going to start dying. Deaths are going to start increasing in June. July, we're going to start burying our dead. We're going to start, you know, cremating them, piling mass cremation, 
we're gonna start doing something that it's gonna be a terrible July. Terrible July. Okay? Be prepared. We're not close. I love you guys <clears throat> very much. Stay safe. <clears throat>